Hello, Zero K fans. Welcome to Nano Lisa Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333, and let's start this exhibition match stream with a match between Felthos and Vistricium on Valles Marineris. Now, those of you who didn't see the Clan Wars on Saturday, or didn't see rather the replay cast I did, can't say I necessarily blame you. They're on YouTube, but if during the stream it got weird with the FFA thing. Anyway, these two, well, Vistricium was playing there. They haven't I haven't seen them in a while. I saw them a long time ago, but I haven't seen them since before the Clan Wars. I can't remember when. Fail thoughts, however, we see all the time. And now this map, Valus Madonatus is, as you can cl clearly see, a very large and very economically focused map. It's designed, I think, for like 4v4 or 5v5. So 1v1 gets very hectic very quickly just due to the sheer amount of resources available. And I'm sure both players will be able to handle it no problem. I'm curious how Vistrishim does play in a 1v1 situation. They, de they did fine in the Clan Wars, as I recall. Though, they were only in one of them. They were in the second ones, like Kane, Vistrishim, and Hokumoko were in the second GBC versus ISP match. The first one did not have Vistrishim. It actually had El Torero, which we'll see later, and Sprung, along with Hokumoko. Which is interesting. But yeah, Vistrishim is actually bona fide, or bona... well is GBC. Actually, truly GBC, not just mercenary like El Torero and Sprung. Anyway, opening up, both players... Actually, no. Felthos going for the Light Vehicle Factory, while Vistrishim goes for the Shieldbot Factory, and that is... That's interesting. Vistrishim clearly trying to play off of the elevation differences, play off of the fact that this is a map where you can kind of set up areas and make it difficult, because vehicles can't get everywhere in this map. Like, a lot of these higher sections are limited for vehicle pathing, but for bot pathing are... Basically all available. Slower to get up, but red just means slow. Purple means unavailable, or unpathable. Bots, therefore, have much greater flexibility, but at the same time, this is a very large map. So I think Felthos is making the right choice. The difference in difference in pathability is not that great. Like I said, Vistricium might want to do some setups. Might want to, like, set up ambushes and such. Not really turrets. I mean, turrets maybe, but that's open to anybody. They might want to set up ambushes of some kind, but I don't... I don't think so. I really think Felthos just put themselves in a major advantage position just by having this speed. Like, this speed is a big deal. Vistrishim, however, does have very little, actually. They don't really have much I can think of offhand that's working to their advantage. I mean, their position isn't the most defendable. Felthos's is. Their factory is not the fastest. Felthos's is. And this is a map that's fairly flat and speed does matter. These, like I said, these elevated sections, the bots... The bots matter more there, but the center of the map is going to be all Felthos. This entire center area, Felthos will basically have a field day with that part of the map. While Vistrishium, they'll have an easier time along the edges, but forcing conflict along the edges is not going to be easy. Because there's no reason they need to. There's, I mean, there's a few metal extractors at the south side, so if Vistrishium focuses on taking the south and I suppose taking the north as well, that'll help. But Vistrishium is only in a good position to take the south at the moment. Not that they're actually doing anything, but... Oh, that is just heretical. Seriously? I don't even want to get into that right now, but... Let's just say there's some there's something to be said for being able to actually access bare metal. Although, given that I professionally use C-sharp a lot, I suppose I shouldn't necessarily talk, but... I like C++. Sorry. Anyway... <laughs> yeah, I suppose I should make... I made my opinion pretty clear when I called that particular phrase heretical. I don't think I'm going to get a comment war over that, though. I doubt anyone's going to really be going on, What do you mean Java's better, worse than C++? It's better than C++. Sun knows everything. JVM is an awesome cross-platform development tool. Yeah, that's... Well, the JVM actually has provided some useful things other than Java. But, yeah, that's just so bloated. Anyway, sorry. I'm just talking way too much shop here. Anyway, back to the game. Felthos is setting up... Well, this attack is not going to go over very well. These Scorchers... This one's... The fact that they're separated like this, I... Felthos, what are you doing? I mean, that's basically death. These bandits are going to just ambush, and yeah, there we go. One Scorcher dies. The second Scorcher would be wise to retreat, but no, still trying to harass. Felthos doesn't want to give up, wants to make sure that Vistrishim has not taken this north side at all, and no, they haven't. Felthos is actually nowhere ahead either. Both Felthos and Vistrishim have been expanding completely independently of each other. 
One of the reasons I was a little bit uncertain about this map in the first place is the fact that it is so big. But apparently this was a rather short game. Apparently this is like one interaction and that's it because... And oh, this is going to be better. Okay, now this course is going to get some kills in. Vistrichium spread their bandits out way too far. They could not help each other. And that... Ow! That Scorcher's actually going to be able to do... Wow, one... This... This is all dead. These four metal extractors are all... Oh, okay, this one's dead. This one's probably dead. This last one here might actually be able to survive. Okay, this Scorcher's going to die. Never mind. To survive, but... Ouch! Vistrichium just happened to have their bandits way too far apart. Where is their radar? Nowhere near there. Felthos, on the other hand, wouldn't even have known one way or the other. They Neither player really has a huge amount of radar. They both kind of have an idea of what's going on in the center. Though Vistrichium taking it first, despite the fact that they are in a much worse position to hold it. And Felthos going for the north, despite the fact that their units really support center play. Very defensive. I mean, Vistrichium does want to take the north. That is where they're going to be strong. And at this point, Felthos has basically stopped that from happening. But at the same time, that's a lot of LLTs invested in one section of the map. Where Vistrichium has just decided, you know, I'm just going to go for units. Not even more thicker commander yet. I don't know. But yeah, Vistrichium is... I say a little bit ahead. Just because that is mobile. That is a lot of units to work with. And the only thing is, they, they haven't taken the south. They're going straight for the center. They have this big line of mexes to the center. But nothing in the south. Nothing to the north. I mean, they can't easily defend the south. That's the one thing. It's like, if they... If they set up a really good position, they can because of the bots, but it's not that big of an advantage. Like I said, the speed advantage is so huge. Vistrichium is doing surprisingly well, despite the fact that speed is really on... Like, this map is on Felthos' side in pretty much every way. The only reason Vistrichium has been doing particularly well is because Felthos hasn't really been attacking all that much. And the one time they did attack, well, Vistrichium was already prepared. Granted, they are no longer prepared there. That, that is actually quite open now. Felthos goes for another strike in that section, then Vistrichium is going to lose basically everything. But yeah, like I said, I don't know why Felthos is not just taking that center right away. However, it looks like... Ah, the, another north attack is coming in, and this is going to probably end it. Will at least deal a great deal of damage. And not much can really be really done about this. Vistrichium does know it's coming. They have radar of this, they know it's coming. I don't know why they're not preparing for it, but they can clearly see there are units going along the north side of the map. They know that they're finally hunting them down, but this is where the speed advantage is going to be huge. Nothing is in position. There's like one bandit that's nowhere near enough. They're going to need about a dozen bandits to deal with this, if not more. If not, just outlaws outright. Or if the, yeah, I guess Napalm Bomb or Phoenixes. Phoenixes might work, but even then, this is going to be extremely damaging. All of these mexes are dead. All six of these are dead. This is going to cripple the Vistrichium. This is what I mean. Like, there's not an easy way to defend this. The south is kind of... It's not super easy to defend, but at least it's more bot-friendly. The southeast section would have been much easier to defend because the vehicles would have had to go through one tiny set of choke points. Like, this ramp and this ramp, that's it. But at this point, this entire center area is dead. And that, with that, Vestrichium gets down to about half of Feldos' economy. And the counterattack? Not doing too great either. One bandit does not have the firepower. I mean, it's pushing it back a little bit, but anything... Like, once it hits this Lotus, it's dead. And there it hits the Lotus, and now it's dead. So, so much for that. I mean, that was... That was 12 metal. 12 metal per second, pretty much, was just lost by Vistrichium because of that one attack that Felthos did. And Vistrichium had nothing in storage. I mean, they're basically... Like, one more good strike like that, and that'll be game. And Vistrichium, like I said, taking the center where they have the least advantage. The least advantageous position for them is in the center. And they're trying to take and hold it, and it's not going to work out. I wonder if they're trying to play it like they would if this was a team game. and you know, go along their lane. It kind of feels like that. I mean, they're going along their lane, as it were. They're not really going along the south, because I guess in a team game you'd have another player down here and they'd be taking the south. And the mid player would be or mid south, or mid player would be taking the mid south, which is mid. And that seems to be that's the only guess I have for why the Strishum is playing the way they are. Because they can't hold the north with it, or sorry, they can't hold the mid with this. They could hold the north if they were near there. They can definitely hold the south, but they didn't really go for it first, they went for the mid first, and that they could not hold. And that's going to be their undoing, as we see. There are Scorches coming in here. 
And Swift's just not enough. It's too little too late. I mean, it's not even going to help, honestly. It's going to be hardly any damage. The Scorchers can actually deal with him, too. That's the other problem. If they're going to get shot. All of them get... Two of them got shot down right away, and that's, that's what I mean. There's not much that can be done here. Top rating me. I'm sorry, Vistrushim. What what game have you been playing? This is like Zero K has a very strong raider game. I I would have thought you'd have known that. You. I, I'm a little surprised how little rating there was, despite even the size of the map. I mean, yes, yeah, it's a fairly large map, but it's not that large from a light vehicle perspective. Yeah, Vistrushim has managed to rebuild somewhat. They're they're reclaiming at least. They have that. Especially with that factory. Now just getting the reclaim in. Going to Cloakies. Why are they not going to vehicles? They must be very uncomfortable with the vehicle factory. Because this map does not serve bots well. And Fail with Us, as we can see, just exploding along the map. Exploding economically. Gone for gunships. Getting the anti-air just because, well, that's all Vistrushim has at this point. All they can build right now is air. And they are building it, but four Swifts against two Tridents? Tridents going to win. Not to mention whatever ground-based anti-air might be there, which... There's none. Nope, just tridents. But tridents is enough. Well, I guess there's defenders, too. But tridents is still enough. So at this point, Vistrushim in a very tight spot. Cloaky Factory, I guess... I don't know. What would you go for with that? Warriors would work okay if they were already placed against the Scorchers. Laves would not would work no better than Bandits. Wouldn't really work as any sort of defense breaker. Hammers would be a pretty good defense breaker. I mean, it wouldn't require support like the Racketeers would, but at the same time, I don't think that would be supportable at this point. Let's see, they are going for Warriors. Yep, they're going to try to set up and block off these Scorchers coming in here. And I think that'll be moderately successful. I think the Scorchers will probably mostly retreat. But as long as the Distrishim gets their territory back, as long as they don't get threatened anymore, you know, they can command a bit of respect from Veltos. Like, okay, don't fight here, don't attack me. Like, not just say stop raiding me, but actually put in a warrior and the warrior says stop raiding me, otherwise you lose all your raiders and I get reclaimed. Pretty effective. It can be, at least. The problem, of course, is speed. It has to be in position in advance, and Vistrishim is not setting themselves up in advance. They actually don't know where to set up. They don't have radar. They have no idea where the Scorchers are coming in from. And once again, like, this is another attack. I think... I think the Warriors are going to help out, but honestly, Vistrishim is so behind at this point. Belthos hasn't quite taken all the economy they can, certainly haven't gotten the overdrive they can, but it's it's a matter of like two or three minutes and they will, if, it, if the game lasts that long. But yeah, the Warriors, okay, so the Warriors are there to say no, if they are put in position in time. But that's, they're purely defensive. On a map of this size, they basically either, if they use defensively, they're one more attack and Vistrishim's dead. If they use defensively, at least it gives Vistrishim a bit of breathing room. They can re-expand here. Excuse me. Re-expand along the north side and basically deny raiding. Like I said before, this area here, like, this is a wall for vehicles. Vehicles have to go around. They either have to go to the north or go to the south. And going to the south would be a bad idea. So they have this north choke point. So the raiders can, or the warriors can actually go here. And now vehicles could go up this path here, but they probably won't. They could. It's not too hard to do this. You know, set up, set up an order chain. Not a big deal, but I don't think they will. I think, I think they're just going to go along this choke point. So as long as Vistrishim hangs out here, they should basically deny any raiding coming in. But it's also 13 minutes into the game, and the fact that they hadn't denied raiding sooner cost them a lot of metal. Probably about 20-some-odd metals per se. Well, I guess 8 in total metal extractors. Yeah, they've lost a lot of metal extractors they did not want to lose. I'm still kind of surprised. I think they're thinking in terms of team game. I think they're thinking that they'd have a partner over to the north side that'd be setting up anti-raiders or riot units and defenses and such that would actually stop them from getting attacked along the north side rather than having to deal with constant influxes of Scorchers. Now, if this Scorcher... Oh, these Warriors are going offensive. That is not what they need to do at all. Oh, man. If those Warriors were in a defensive position, Felthos would probably completely respect Vistrishim right now. They'd probably go, okay, okay. I won't raid you anymore. I can't raid you. They're relying on a single warrior right now to hold the fort. That is not going to work. It'll die after about two or three Scorchers die, roughly. It's... No, this this is extremely risky. I mean, this is what I meant. Like, they could attack, they go offensive, but then they get hit, and they get hard. And this is... That's 13 Scorchers coming in right there. And if, if it weren't for the fact that the warriors are out of position, like I said, these Scorchers would all die. 
If this Warriors had left about three minutes later, all of the Scorchers would be dead. Feldhaus would probably respect Vestrician's defensibility. And Vestrician wouldn't have to worry about basically losing all their base again to a bunch of Scorchers. I mean, they've been reclaiming, which is good. That's good. That's great. They should be doing that. It's just they've lost all of their Warriors to a bunch of LLTs. They haven't really opened up Feldhaus in any meaningful way. Feldhaus has a defensive line across the entire map. Feldhaus has not been opened up. At all. All that's happened is that metal has been donated. Had these Scorchers been defended against and destroyed, Feldhaus probably wouldn't have attacked again or would have waited a little while. Like maybe expected, oh, well, the Warriors are going to be moving out now. Now I'll attack. But no, that didn't happen. Thug's doing surprisingly well, though. But yeah, it's just... This is not opening up Feldhaus in the slightest. And Vestrishim got torn to shreds again. They got cracked open on the north side once again. They are taking the south, which is kind of nice to see, but at this point, I don't know if it really matters anymore. Surprised they're ahead militarily, though. What is Feltos up to? Ah, that's why. Feltos going for the end game solution, going for the crow. Just finishing it up, too, but that... Okay, that makes some sense. I was wondering why Feltos didn't have the army values that I figured they should by this point. I mean, there are enough warriors here, but it's just... Like, they could, they might be able to punch through again with another half dozen warriors. Oh, dozen warriors, never mind. Okay, that's actually quite a few. That's pretty risky, though. I mean, even the Zeus coming in here, like, Vestrisham just trying to punch through Felthas' defenses, losing a lot in the process. Doing some damage, but I don't see it being that meaningful. This crow's gonna come in here. I mean, is the commander even alive still? Not that it matters a great deal. Yes, it is. Well, not for, not for long, mind you. But the commander is currently alive. I mean, good luck getting rid of that. Granted, this... Well, uh, how much damage does this deal? Oh. That actually could do it. That could stun this thing out. Not that it matters, though. Vestrician realizes there's not much they can do at this point. But yeah, I mean, they were already kind of in the hole just from starting with shields. I think if they had outlaws... Like, if they had prepared for raiders coming in... They would have had an easier time dealing with this, but they hadn't really prepared for an, a bunch of Scorchers. Had they done so, they would have kept their economy, they would have kept on par, probably would have been able to expand very quickly up and up the north and down the south. But yeah, I just think they were probably playing as if it was a team game. That's the impression I'm getting, is that they were playing it as if it was a team game, as if they had allies to the north and to the south that would be handling the south side, and the mid, north, and the north, the far north. Like, they'd be able to handle all this stuff, and Fistrician wouldn't be able to, wouldn't have to deal with all that. But that's not the case, because you're playing a duel. And in a duel, you have to deal with the fact that you are dealing with everything. Everything on your side is yours, and you have to manage it. One of the reasons I like duels, but for a lot of people, it's kind of tricky. Vestrishim, however, is, like, not to disrespect him, or them, not to disrespect them, they're quite good at team games. And that's the thing, they're clearly a team player. They're just watching their place, the way they were playing there, it looked like they were... They were intending to play as part of a team. They had that they had that habit down. Good habit to have in team games. Not as useful for duels, but... I mean, I've seen them play teams. They're pretty good. They're a respectable team player. Anyway, on to the next match, which is going to be El Torero versus Aquinim. And it's actually going to be two matches. They played a couple matches in a row. I don't know if it was meant to be best of three, or it was just, let's play two matches. Anyway, first one's going to be on Geyser Plains, so, yeah. I mean, Geyser Plains, some people like it, some people don't. I don't know if it's really that disliked, but that's the next map, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.